seems to me that no matter where we are in life, you know, maybe we had a dream and we've attained that dream to a certain degree, then no matter where we are in life, we can always look around that maybe it's just, I guess, the way we're made, um, that we look around and we're constantly comparing ourselves to someone else. Uh, don't have as much as they have, don't have the opportunities they have, don't have the talents they have. Um, am I the only one who struggles with this thing of comparison <laughs> to other people? No, I've been doing it all weekend. You have? We're around a lot of smart Polish people here. Yeah. It's like, I'm not this smart. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. We all compare. How about you, Jen? Yeah. Oh, no. It's not a problem for me okay, at all. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> No, it is, and it, it drives me crazy. Like, I, I, I want to say, I'm too old to still be doing this. Yeah. And then, and, and it's, so, it's so second nature that it's like it begins in my head before I even realize that it started, yes. and I'm already halfway down the path before I realize, yes. what is happening? Why do I even care about this? Yeah, as I've thought about this, I've thought it's really a subtle sin mm -hmm. because it's all internal. Yep. I mean, maybe it comes out in our words with mm -hmm. some people we talk about. But it's really an ongoing internal conversation as you just, you know, look at another person and they're thinner than you are, mm -hmm. or they've got a better wardrobe than you are, they seem to have a happier marriage, a, a more complete family, their kids are doing better in school. I mean, just all those things. And um, it seems like it's one of those things, we discover the instinct in our hearts and the, the default setting of our hearts can mm -hmm. easily be just to compare. And, and I think there can be healthy ways of comparison. Yeah, what um, you, how? If, if I look at a woman who's, a, I'm a new mother, and so I might compare myself to an older mother uh -huh. in light of, man, that's encouraging. I want to learn how to do that because I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Instead of, but I think the the unhealthy way is to be easily discouraged by it and start to think all these things. I'm a terrible person because I didn't train my child to talk by the time she was two. That type of comparison, I think, is dangerous and wrong. But I think, uh, yeah, you said so to be encouraged by it. But but I think oftentimes what comparison brings up in me is not to be encouraged by it, be jealous of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a really ugly thing, um, mm -hmm. or even worse than that, envious of them, right. which would mean not only um, do I wish I had it, I wish they didn't have it, right. which is just like the ugliest thing ever. Yeah. yeah, and that's the bad part about the whole covetousness that arises out of comparison is that covetousness is not benign. It's not just that you wish you had what someone else want, has. It's that you resent that they have it. Yeah, and so, that's yeah, that's the really hard piece of it. There's a French proverb, and I'm probably going to hack it up right now, but it says one of the greatest obstacles to contentment is our ridiculous assumptions about the happiness of others, you know, that we assume mm -hmm. that someone is happier than we are because of what they own or how they look or something like that. And so we trick ourselves into thinking that God has held out on us and given yeah. something good to someone else that he's withheld from us. And so we build resentment not just toward the other person, but toward... God who ordains our seasons and times. It's a tricky thing. Yeah. So we look on Facebook yeah. and we see somebody else's vacation mm -hmm. compared to ours. Theirs looks really good, <laughs> right? Or they've redecorated their house mm -hmm. and look a lot better than we can do. Mm -hmm. And their, their, their kids look better. And so what do we do in those moments uh, to fight against that kind of comparison? Does God... Does God care about that? Is that? I think He cares. I think I think comparison can potentially be very self-centered um, um, because it becomes about you. Like I don't have what they have. I want what they. It's like mm -hmm. it's not about you. You know, like life isn't about you. So I think becoming a more humble person, a more content person, will make you less. Uh, prone to comparison. Yeah, you know, there's a saying that everything this side of hell is grace, yeah. that mm. what do we have that we deserve at all? And so I think when you can kind of reframe your perspective and say, okay, the things that I do have have been given to me and I'm yeah. supposed to steward them, mm -hmm. it's different than saying, why don't I have this or mm -hmm. why don't I have that? And those we know those are attitudes we should have outgrown as we got older, but honestly, we do tend to hang on to them. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that has really helped me is recognizing that it's a lie to say it doesn't hurt to look. So that's what we tell ourselves. You know, like, 
oh, I'm just going to be a mall walker because I need exercise, and it's not going to hurt me to walk past all this merchandise all the time, and yet every time I go walk the mall, I come home with stuff sticking to me, you know, that I'm like, well, I have to have that because I've, compare, I've made some comparison and come up short and thought this is going to diminish the distance between who I am and who I want to be. And so we tell ourselves, I can sit under these desire-enhancing sources. Like when the catalog comes in the mail, I can look at it. It's not going to hurt me. Or uh, when, the, when I'm out on Facebook, that's not doing anything to me. But the report in Scripture is that it absolutely hurts to look, that the eyes are the gateway to where temptation takes hold and covetousness and all those things. So I don't think that it is beyond the realm of reasonability to say, how can I look around me and limit the desire-enhancing sources that I'm willingly mm-hmm. placing myself in front of that are stirring up mm-hmm. in me these comparisons? Mm-hmm. Well, I really like what you said, Jackie, about comparison actually having a potential positive Mm -hmm. impact on our life. As we look at people and as we compare our lives to them, perhaps uh, that we look at them and we say, I aspire to that. Right. And... And when we can, and when the when the Holy Spirit is at work, when we can do that, mm-hmm. m- motivated not out of pride, like I want to look that good, or I want people to be impressed with me, because it, but no, I look at that and I see genuine, authentic godliness right. there, yeah. and I think that's what I want to be and do. So comparison can be really good for that, but that negative sense of comparison, I suppose, ultimately, isn't. If we look at other people and we compare and we think they've had uh, more opportunity, why didn't I have parents like they had? Mm-hmm. Why, you know, why didn't I mm-hmm. come from a home like they had? Why didn't my family have money to give me that kind of education like they had? Whatever. Ultimately, it can uh, really grow in us a deep sense of dissatisfaction with God, can't, mm-hmm. it? can't it? And really, rebellion against God, like, you didn't do right by me. Yeah. It's as if his sovereignty wasn't good. Yes. It wasn't wise. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so the, the bigger issue is you and God, yeah. not even you and other people. Yeah. You know. So. so the answer to comparison would be, and I, I, I'm thinking an answer to comparison is, God, I am satisfied mm-hmm. Absolutely. with how you have made me mm-hmm. and what you have given to me and what you have entrusted to me and the life you have given me and the family you have given me. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Absolutely.